Hi, I'm Josh, and I'm here to talk not about Seinfeld, but about the OP-1's secret synth engine. Uh, that is right, the OP-1 has a secret synth engine. Secret is maybe a subjective term. I have seen videos about this as old as I want to say about six years, but you know, I've had the OP-1, I've watched tons of videos on it before and after getting it. I've made plenty of videos with it. And it was news to me, so hopefully there'll be someone out there for whom this is news. And, um, you know, if you enjoy the video, either because it was news or I uh, just happened to be entertaining, please consider, you know, leaving a like, subscribing, all that. Anyway, the synth engine that we're going to talk about is called ITER. And it looks like this. Before we go into how it actually works, let's talk about how you can unlock it. And uh, fortunately, it doesn't take any kind of firmware modification, though I do believe if you install custom firmware, you can unlock it that way as well. What I did was I just went to the OP1 Fun website, I searched ITER in the plugins, found one that used this engine, downloaded it, put it on the OP1, and when you open it, there it is. So I'm not sure why they don't let you normally access this. Maybe it was not like fully fleshed out. Maybe they wanted it to be some kind of little Easter egg, maybe Teenage Engineering, just forgot, who knows. But it's in there, you don't need to do any modification to your OP1's firmware to access it, that's great. So what is ITER? And um, shout out to user Bribery on the OP Forums website. Uh, from your blog post, I was able to gather a lot of the, uh, let's say, technical jargon for how to describe it. So ITER is a synth engine that it adds like another filter and a separate filter envelope. Which is pretty sweet, uh, you know, love having more options for sound design. I'm gonna quickly set all of these parameters down to zero so we can start with the raw sound. I'll make sure all the effects are off and the LFO. So ITER is built around giving you another filter and an envelope for that filter to be applied to its otherwise pretty simple synth tones. And this blue knob that I turned up is the filter envelope amount. So on its own, that doesn't actually change the sound because there isn't a filter envelope being applied. I'm gonna turn up the white knob, which is cutoff, and the green knob, which is the filter envelope speed. hear that it started having, um, I would describe it as like a thudding quality, as well as having this kind of a noisy nature to it. If we turn up red, this is going to give us some filter cutoff modulation. I'm going to turn the cutoff here down some, and the speed down as well, and the filter envelope amount all the way up. And it becomes uh, a little bit crazy. Now, the OP-1 has a reputation for being very toy-like in the sound of its various synth engines, and I'm not going to necessarily dispute that, but it is fun, the weird sounds you can create. It's like uh, chaotic, the, the winds of Mars combined with the sound of dropping a piano down a flight of stairs. Let's talk about the other cool thing with ITER, which is its filter. But not the, not, not the filter that's in the synth engine, this is the filter as in it's an effect. Now the OP-1 already has a filter effect called Nitro that 
is honestly pretty straightforward considering how weird some things on the OP-1 get. You've got a low pass filter frequency, a high pass filter frequency, resonance, and filter follow. But if we jump back into ITER, this is, I would say, like, pretty straightforward as far as a filter on a synth goes. You choose your mode, so I could have, like, uh, the low-pass filters. You've got notch filters, band pass, high pass. And then your blue knob controls frequency. Green knob controls resonance. And the red knob controls drive, which I'm going to turn some of these down before I start driving this signal. Well, that was the sound of me clipping my audio interface, but that is how that filter works. Uh, what's cool is that, and again, you know, this is without having to install any kind of custom firmware. If I go here, I hit shift one. This is how you, you know, load a different synth engine. I'll load digital but I've still got Eider's filter. Let's get a low pass. And I'm gonna turn. You can apply it to the other synth engines and I think that is actually really, really cool. And maybe my favorite thing about it, I mean, the, the synth engine Eider sounds really neat but the Eider filter on other presets, or on other synth engines, I mean, uh, I just think is so cool. Let's go into, why don't we do cluster? So without it, with it, we'll try some different modes. Let's turn the resonance down and the drive down some. So we've got this cool combination of cluster and the Eider filter. Oh, if only there was some kind of backing track that we could do a little outro jam over. Oh, hey, I put something in the tape. So we'll close out by playing some music that involves more than one synth sound at once. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, hitting subscribe. If you already knew about Eider, you can leave a comment that's like, hey, I already knew about Eider. Uh, and if you did not know about Eider, you can leave a comment that's like, hey, I didn't know about Eider. Um, and there's probably some other form of comment you can leave, but you know, I'm not creative. What do I know? Anyway. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.